Everybody knows that inflammatory breast cancer is a, one of the toughest uh, breast cancers that we treat. Usually they are uh, locally advanced at presentation and usually they tend to have metastasis also at presentation or early in the course of the development of the disease. This entity has been uh, identified early in the 20th century. It was around 1920 or 1925. But till today, we only know that it is very aggressive, but we don't have clues to how to treat them, particularly as a precise entity. Uh, in the United States, it's 2.5% of, of the breast cancer patients. But in the region, and mainly it has been you know, published a lot in Tunisia, it, is, it was around 30% or 40% 20 or 30 years ago. The incidence has dropped currently to nearly 5 or 6%, which is still three times the incidence of Western countries, most probably because of the improvement in the socio-economics of the country of the region. We don't have any other statistics in the region to say exactly how much it is inflammatory breast cancer. What we have uh, done uh, recently and what uh, everybody has done recently is try to go into the molecular biology and in to try to go to see the genomics of uh, those patients if those inflammatory breast cancer has a certain profiling which might give us clues on how to treat those patients. Uh, we have learned the three things. We have learned first that they have a high tumor mutation load when we compare them to non-inflammatory breast cancer. And uh, the, 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 the mutation or the genomic signature that we have most is the TP53 alterations. We have also learned that the microenvironment acts a lot in the development of inflammatory breast cancer. And uh, there is a role for... Uh, uh, macrophages, and there is a role for mesenchymal, mesenchymal stem cells. So there is a lot to do and, and to explore in those three directions in order maybe to develop later on more targeted treatments or more uh, uh, tailored treatments to those patients. We know that usually they are hormone receptors negative, so we lose all the magnitude of treating them with anti-hormone treatment. And everybody knows that we have a lot of advances which came recently in the hormonal treatment. Unfortunately, we cannot take advantage of those advances. And in the chemotherapy, we know that usually they are resistant to chemotherapy. So we are left with nearly nothing special to do with this entity. From the conclusions of all these, what we have said already, uh, the only practical conclusions that we can say today is that because of the high tumor burden of the mutations, tumor mutation burdens, there is a role most probably of using checkpoint inhibitors and immunotherapy in the treatment of those patients. Uh, there are few clinical trials who have been published. All of them are uh, phase one or early phase two trials. The most promising seems to use a combination of immunotherapy with chemotherapy. So using both immunotherapy and chemotherapy, there is at least one publication with nearly 30 to 35 percent of response rate in this, in this particular publication. But there were a very small number of patients. These were 20 or 30 patients out of there. But we might see in it uh, a a recommendation in order to develop more maybe combination, based combination on immunotherapy. So I think that currently today or tomorrow, and this might be the conclusion of what we have discussed today, uh, when we have an inflammatory breast cancer, we need to perform molecular biology uh, evaluation and genomics on those patients in order to identify targets and eventually propose those patients immunotherapy combined with chemotherapy. But there is still a lot of work to do. So as everybody else, I am enjoying a lot participating with this conference. Uh, you know, this conference has been here around for 10 years to the row. I participated personally in nine of those conferences. And it has been increasing, you know, and improving all over the years. 
um, people in our region will wait for this conference because I am saying that, and I know that everybody thinks the same, this is most probably the most important breast conference, you know, dedicated breast cancer conference to be done in the region on a yearly basis. And it is, you know, done in collaboration with multiple international associations like the American Society of Clinical Oncology, the European Society of Clinical Oncology, and the societies of all the Arab worlds, you know, like the Arab, uh, Arab uh, Association for Medical, uh, you know, Cancer Physicians. So I highly recommend this conference for our colleagues to participate, and I hope that we will have a lot of years to go. Thank <music> you.